I was telling people, I know enough about HIV. I think if I wanted to, I could probably get HIV to infect through the airborne route. In questo momento, mentre voi guardate, esistono laboratori e scienziati che con tecniche genetiche e molecolari trasformano virus esistenti in nuove, implacabili macchine di infezione e di morte. Se uno di questi virus sfugge di mano o viene piratato, la Covid-19 potrebbe sembrarci una vacanza. O forse il Covid-2 è proprio uno di questi virus manipolati. Il web oggi, con la pandemia Covid-19, è zeppo di voci in tal senso, ma sono voci della rete. Io ho invece intervistato su questo tema uno degli scienziati al top, perché più in alto dell'Istituto Pasteur di Parigi, in virologia, forse non c'è nulla al mondo. Ma per capire occorre una premessa. Gain of function è il termine scientifico che descrive gli esperimenti dove i ricercatori manipolano geneticamente e molecolarmente un virus, tipo l'influenza o un virus animale, per renderlo sempre più aggressivo o per capire come può passare dall'animale all'uomo. Poi lo eh, sperimentano su cavie o su culture di cellule umane. In altre parole, essi maneggiano armi di distruzione di massa vere e proprie, ma, come sentiremo, giustificano la validità di queste ricerche. Nel 2014 il Presidente Obama aveva imposto una moratoria su queste pratiche eh, in America. Trump l'ha abolita nel 2017. In Europa la regolamentazione della gain of function è un dibattito ancora aperto, nel resto del mondo, fra cui la Cina, è ampiamente praticata. Sulla realtà della gain of function intervisto il dottor Simon Wayne Hobson, che è capo struttura di retrovirologia molecolare all'Istituto Pasteur di Parigi. Nella prima parte inquadriamo il problema, nel finale fa venire i brividi, almeno a me. Professor Wayne Hobson, uh, when and how did you first realize that some labs in the world were toying with the lives of millions of people? It comes in the autumn of 2011. Yes, and, and what happened? There was a conference in Malta, of all places, uh, where this research was discussed for the, presented for the first time by a, a Dutch gent called Ron Fouché, and unfortunately he used rather elaborate and um, worrisome terms and said it was a dangerous virus. And this immediately got everyone's attention. He presented this little bit like, a, uh, so it was a little secret and he was sort of excited about what he was doing. Okay, very well. Let's put faces to, uh, to the subject. Uh, a world-leading notable in gain-of-function research is uh, Dr. Xing Yi Jie at the Wuhan Institute of Virology of all places. But aside from China, can you tell us where the major research labs for gain-of-function are located today and the names of major industrial players, if any? I'll do the last question. No industrial players that I know of. The closest to home is the Erasmus University in the Netherlands. And this is Professor Ron Fouchier. Then if we go across the Atlantic, we have Professor Kawaoka in Madison in the state of Wisconsin. And then we have a gentleman, and I'm blanking on his name, in Mount Sinai University in New York and he's doing gain of function. Those are the three labs working on influenza. Then you have uh, Ralph Barrick down in North Carolina. So you go south of Washington and uh, a few hundred kilometers and you'll find his lab at Durham in, uh, in the Carolinas and he's doing it. Not many groups are working on it, but um, I wouldn't actually know the complete number, but they are the major players. Plus China, of course. Plus uh, China, of course. And yes. China is working on influenza and coronavirus gain of function. 
Un esempio di gain of function, che ormai conoscono anche le nonne grazie ai complotti del web, è questo studio del 2015, a firma di una celebrità della gain of function, cioè Ralph Barrick dell'Università del North Carolina, e poi a firma della mia vecchia conoscenza Wayne Marasco, dell'Università di Harvard, e a firma di Xing Yi Zhe, dell'ormai notorio istituto di virologia di Wuhan. Ma per chi questi studi li legge davvero e non si fa disparate di YouTube di sta, di sta roba, il lavoro di Bari che soci, per quanto pericolosissimo, ci avvisava però già cinque anni fa che questa pandemia sarebbe prima o poi accaduta, esattamente con queste caratteristiche, e invitava il mondo a prendere provvedimenti, che ovviamente nessuno ha preso. E allora? Now, let's, let's hear from the defense, attor the defense attorney. Uh, he would say that the logic of gain of function is to mimic in the lab the mutations that allow an animal virus to jump to humans, uh, or those that could turn a known virus into a pandemic killer. By knowing these mutations, science will be better equipped to fight against a possible threat. Okay, tell us why this is flat wrong. The way the defense attorney gives the argument, it means that there's just a very small number of ways to get mm. this result. So it presupposes that when you want to uh, change a bat virus into a human virus, there are only one or two changes, and once you've got it, that's it. The fact is, this is not true. There are maybe several hundred ways of doing it. In our language, in my language of genomes, there could be several hundred ways of doing it. Which of those several hundred will the virus take for the next pandemic? Or which of those several hundred routes did this coronavirus that we experience now that's hitting us in the face, which route did it take? We don't know. Well, you know, uh, quite frankly, we have seen with uh, the, this coronavirus, you know, all this work has not prevented literally anything. So let, let me go, let me go on to the next. It did not only, uh, uh, predict anything, that all that information gained from gain of function, it did not prepare us in any way to handle what we, it hit you, your country, France, England, everywhere. No, no. nothing. Uh, that the military complex tinkers with all sorts of gain-of-function viruses is well known. It's called biowarfare. Less known is that civilian scientists do the same thing in labs placed in crowded civilian areas, even at universities with thousands of students around. There are questions here, three questions. Um, A. Who is funding gain-of-function in the U.S.? and in the EU. Where's the money Gain of from? It's financed by the National Institute of Health, and it's the particular arm of that institute called the Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, run by Dr. Tony Fauci. Uh, in the EU, there is relatively little funding, as far as I'm aware. I haven't looked recently, but most of it is coming from the US. How likely is it, in your opinion, that this COV-2 novel virus may have escaped a gain-of-function lab in Wuhan by accidentally infecting an employee? How likely is it? Difficult one, because we don't know everything that was going on in that Wuhan lab. Everything I see about this virus shows that it is not how can I say, it's not an engineered virus. I don't see the hand of the, of the virologist in its genome. Um, I said accidentally infecting. I, I didn't say purposely. Escape. It is either a natural infection or it could have been a virus that was isolated, not manipulated, isolated and escaped. That's a possibility, yes, indeed. That's a possibility. And to know what if this is, this is to distinguish between the two we would like, like to know what was going on in the Wuhan lab but absolutely
gain of function is among us. Uh, you know, Trump has lifted the uh, lifted the moratorium in 2017. So, given the global disaster people are tasting at this very moment, the possibility of a new gain of function pandemic is an immensely serious subject. Um, so. The precautionary principle dictates that we envision a worst case scenario. This is pretty serious. Um, so questions. A. Could they, by chance or purposely, engineer a virus that ends up being able to resist all known medical drugs and treatments? Your, the, the, your present example is COVID-19. We don't have drugs, we don't have vaccines. Okay, so we're living in your first scenario. And so the, where does it come from? I think for the moment it's natural. But someone could make some sort of nasty little virus and if it got out, it would be totally resistant because it's new. Could they, by chance, or purposely engineer one that manages to evade all forms of human immunity, or whether natural immunity or vaccine-induced? Could you make... Um, a microbe that we all immune. I think that is unlikely. Um, but Mr. Kawaoka, Professor Kawaoka in Madison, one of the gentlemen who is working on gain of fun function influenza virus, he made a virus that basically is the equivalent of a few pandemic virus. And it would escape the immunity that you have in your body to the virus of 2019, to the immunity that I have in my body to the virus of 2019. And everyone listening to, to this program, he's made a virus and he did it in a P2 lab. No one screamed. It's absolutely a crazy experiment to have done. And he did it. Could they artificially make a virus that will actually create disease with minimal viral loads. Could they engineer that? I'll be very blunt. Tell what you want, and I could, or we could probably do it. All right. So we have, we have the technology, we have the brain power. And I'll give you an example. One of the examples I showed, uh, I used, where we was complaining about gain of function, is the following. I was telling people, I know enough about HIV. I think if I wanted to, I could probably get HIV to infect through the airborne route. I'm not, I couldn't guarantee it, but I think I would know what experiments to do that know the path prior to explore to get it done. Would I do it? No way. HIV is, I've been working on it since 1984. I have a huge respect for this virus. It's a nasty piece of work, nastier than COVID. But if I wanted to, for some perverse reason, I, it might be possible, but I wouldn't do it because I would think it's crazy would be too dangerous, and I'm not sure I would learn anything from it. So I could say, let's give an example. Take your COVID virus or this pangolin virus, and uh, let's say we want it to go through uh, um, uh, to be more efficient. I'm sure we could probably do it. You So you tell me what you want, and... I guarantee a result, but I might get there. Well, that's, we, that's... Have, we have the technology. Therefore, we have to stop ourselves. We have to say, I need to do that. Is there any good science there? If there isn't, don't do it. But I could probably do it. What that's just... how we come. What you just said. That's, that's the danger in my sort of genetic virological hands. I'm holding up my hand because we use the hand to explain what we can do. That is the power we now have in our labs. Well, so we have to be, we have to be aware of the moral dimension and what we're doing. We can't just do anything. 
So now, uh, us, all citizens, us, we can very well imagine what would be of us if a truly deadly gain of function strain is made and then escapes. So are you confident that gain of function research in no way could be pivotal for the discovery of new treatments or for the discovery of better vaccines? That would, could be another line of defense. Oh, we'll discover new drugs. Oh, we'll That's discover right. new vaccines. No, well, I think because what you're saying is, is hugely important. And my analysis is there is nothing in gain-of-function work that is going to help us make useful drugs and useful vaccines. Wow. Period. You do know do you know that actually people resuscitated the Spanish flu virus? Things of gain of function, did you see? Yes. It's, so oh. they sequenced it and then they made infectious virus from the genes that had been chosen in cadavers in um, what are the islands, Norwegian islands north of um, north of north in the Arctic Circle. They identified cadavers, isolated the genes, and instituted the virus. And if that virus escaped, well, we all know about the dangers of Spanish flu. I think we who have a did this? Do you, do you remember who did this? Oh, it's a guy called Tauben, uh, Taubenberger, and he works at the NIH. Um, I think um, uh, we can debate the merits of that work, but um, um, I, th I think we need a new discussion of gain of function in the light of COVID. Um, I think we were getting complacent. I think we'd all forgotten what a pandemic was. And the 2019 pandemic was um, um, so mild that we said, ah, oh, we can control Pandemics are not dangerous anymore. We can handle them. And now we've got this COVID pandemic. Um, I think we become complacent. And I think we need to rediscuss. And uh, let's hope there'll be some discussion of this. I'm, um, um, I think it's necessary. And Europe uh, is a place to have the discussion because in America, um, they have been financing gain of function and there might be pushback. Whereas in the UNs are more open to this sort of discussion involving ethics. I think we'll have a better debate in the in Europe.